and welcome to Becky's House of Sewing. I'm Becky. This is my house of sewing. You might be able to tell because it's a mess. You're welcome. My mother will be so proud. I mean, she is in general very proud of me, but you know, I could clean up a little bit. I, I did put clothes on, so you know, did shower. What more do you want from me? Anyway, this is my house of sewing where uh, the video podcast blog, vlog, whatever you like to call them on YouTube these days um, about my sewing, quilting and cross stitching mostly. I do some hand sewing as well. So it's just my sewing excursions, just talking it up, having a good time. Um, I haven't been around for a little bit. Life has gotten away from me a little bit. I, uh, I'm not scared to say it all, but May and June have been a little bit of a blur. Several things have been updated and changed. Um, glasses, finally got those up. I think I had the frames last time, but the prescription wasn't right. Uh, the bifocal wasn't in the right place. Um, I really enjoy my glasses. Uh, I do feel like I want to wear them all the time, but I feel like my eyesight changes. Is this, is this a thing? Am I weird? Other people feel this way? Um, Sometimes, I, I, I can't tell a, an exact straight line yet. Um, uh, I feel like I need them more for work than for everyday life. Uh, I do, I haven't been wearing them all day today. Um, but I have been wearing my readers for cross stitching because I've been stitching a little bit today. Um, so I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, I really feel like the bifocal is in a better place. I don't know if it's the perfect place yet. We'll find out. We'll keep, we'll keep trying. Um, I definitely do still need them though. Um, um, I didn't realize how far away sight was uh, impacted and yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm nearly 50 people, nearly 50. So, um, you know, it's not that shocking to need them. Uh, the other big thing that has happened, do, 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 Edie Mae. Look how pretty. Oh, she's so pretty. This is my new um, dog, Edie Mae. She's our addition to the family. Nothing has happened to Mia. Um, except that they're not allowed in the same room together. We are not quite a happy family yet. We are seeking professional help. But isn't she pretty? She's very cute. She's about six years old. She's a little shorter than um, Mia is, but also a little heavier. We're working on that as well. The only things allowed to be fat in our house are people. We're honestly working on that as well. So, um, work is good. I had a big work trip uh, since I was last on. Um, I have been busy with work. We've been busy with the dogs. We've been, I just feel like nothing, nothing dramatic really has happened. I mean, other than adding Edie, that's, you know, exceptional. Um, but it, it's just been a lot. I just haven't had a lot of time to myself. I'm like, oh, I could spare a few minutes and do a floss tube. I haven't even wanted to watch Floss Tube, which I feel devastated to even say out loud, but not a lot of things have been able to hold my attention for very long. Um, with that said, I do have some stitching, but before I get into my stitching, I have breaking news. We've done it, people. We have converted Ron to sewing. Now, Ron is not new to sewing. He's he's sewn in the past, uh, mostly upholstery from my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, Ron. Um, but he, he he's bought some sewing machines, people. And then he's taken some classes. I, I, I dare I say, Ron is a quilter now. And I couldn't be more proud <laughs> of my, um, inspiration 
uh, being the touchstone of motivation for Ron. Um, I welcome to the club. Um, Connie, I'm, I'm sorry, not sorry. Um, I know. Ron went from apparently one sewing machine to four sewing machines. Um, most of them antique. Um, so uh, it's uh, been a fun venture and and it's not hard to be addicted to it, especially when you can buy an $80 sewing machine that's over 100 years old. <laughs> or not over 100, over 50 years old. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, so I, uh, I'm excited for you, Ron. It's my public announcement that I'm rather proud of where you are. <laughs> he's sending me text messages of different quilt stores he's going to. So there you have it. Uh, Ron, I would like to formally invite you to um, uh, the Charlotte Quilters Guild. We have Saturday sewing events and they're starting a Wednesday sewing um, event like once a month kind of deal. And that will be at Sewendipitous you should come. You should be my guest because it's going to be on a Wednesday, which means I have to miss Wednesday stitching. Um, but I'll be still stitching just with different stitchers. Um, so there you have it. Um, I don't remember the dates. I don't know if they've officially created dates yet, but, um, I will let you know. I'll keep you in the loop and hopefully we'll be able to haul buns to Rock Hill, South Carolina. All right. So everybody, aren't you excited? Um, those of you who are familiar with Ron and Connie, they are my neighbors. They um, have encouraged me a lot with the floss tubes and anxiously await their arrival on YouTube. Um, and they have a drinking game. <laughs> Every time I say their name, they have a drink. Um, Notice I didn't say your names right there either, because I feel like I've said your names a lot, and so I don't want to get you too drunk right away. Now, if you'd like to play along, um, viewers, feel free. You don't have to do alcohol. You can do any beverage. Uh, Ron and Connie have requested another um, House of Sewing After Dark scenario. I will probably have a, a virgin beverage at that time as well, but it, I will, I promise... I will do one. Um, so, with that said, would you like to see some stitching? Um, I have been quite productive since um, we last spoke. Now, I'm I'm slow at all the stitching, and I am very proud of that. I, I I'm not winning a race. I'm not doing it to be the winner of the most quilts or the most stitching done. Um, I do what I love and what I like, when I love, and when I like. We can't argue with that, people. Um, so, one thing that I have completed that you can't see, because I've given it away, um, is a baby quilt. I have a co-worker that's having a baby. Isn't that exciting? Um, so, I did a baby quilt for them, and I whipped it up relatively quickly. It's a, a cute little patchwork. Isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? It's not focusing very well. Um, so the animal squares were a panel that I acquired at some point in my fabric collection time. Um, and they say funny things like, uh, quick as a bunny, see you later alligator busy as a bee, that kind of thing. So I cut them up, and then here's a closer look. Then I used varying black and white prints that I have in my stash, and I made the quilt. And I put a label on it, too. Mm, sorry. The, it's blowing out a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, and that was the back. So it's all black and white. To help the babies with the eyesight. Because black and white is supposed to help them. Um, so that was kind of fun to get that together. And of course I gave them something on their registry as well. Um, it probably wasn't, it didn't end up being like a ginormous quilt. It was probably like 
40 by 58 wasn't it wasn't very big um, which doesn't diminish the fact that I cut it all up <laughs> and made it and so do a fairly decent job I um, have been thinking lately that my sewing skills on my sewing machine have been improving and I'm very proud of that so uh, that was exciting and I did very basic stitch in the ditch type quilting I didn't go super crazy on it um, and you know the baby doesn't care <laughs> the baby's not gonna notice uh, so that was a fully finished object or Ron what do we call that an FFO um, I have a fully uh, not a fully I have a finished object in my cross stitch so let me talk about cross stitch a little bit um, so I have discovered uh, I think my my zone of cross stitch like what fabric count I really like and it's 40 count um, I, I forget how I got that started um, but I I have bought a couple pieces of uh, linen and uh, done a couple of things on 40 count to try it out and madly in love madly I love the uh, 40 count with DMC one strand over two uh, uh, threads of linen so that's one over two uh, and it's ideal pull it out of the floss drop, run it through a little um, damp sponge to straighten it out and really reduce the knots. That's a trick I learned from Jean Farish. If you don't watch her and you cross stitch, you should. She's been teaching since the 80s. Her designs aren't all my favorites, um, but I really like her samplers and she has taught me so much. So I've been quilt, uh, quilting, I've been quilting a while too, but I've been cross stitching since a little girl, uh, not consistently, not like I was attached to it all my life, um, but I have cross stitched things throughout every decade, I feel like. So I felt like I know how to cross stitch. And as I was watching Jean Farish during the pandemic, I realized <laughs> It's like, where was I when I, when I learned the, the loop method? Had no idea that what that was or that it was a thing. Um, it's a life-changing option when you're stitching with two threads over two. Um, the waist knot, the different techniques, uh, the English way of uh, stitching, cross-stitching, and then, oh, now I can't remember. But it's how, how you stitch each X at a time, or if you are stitching one leg and then going back. Again, life-changing. Uh, also, she's given me a lot of freedom about how to, you wanna have a neat back to your work so that it lays flat, but it's okay to carry a thread or bury a thread through to get to another section. It doesn't have to be neat for being neat's sake. Um, I know some of my cross stitches, if you turn them to the back, they look exactly like the front almost. Um, and that, going to that extreme is ne not necessary um, and can make it harder to cross stitch, depending on the pattern. Needless to say, I totally went on a tangent. You're welcome. Um, so I have finished something on my first piece of 40 count that I bought. I went to one, two, three stitch, um, to try, uh, 40 count. I wanted just to get not, not a cheap, but not a hand dyed necessarily piece of, uh, 40 count linen. And while I was at it, I got threads for several projects. So I got a really big piece of 40 count so I could do multiple um, uh, stitches on it. And I got Platinum by, I think it's this Weigart uh, Platinum. And it is, it is this. Look, 
So I started Fox's View by Plum Street. Let me. This is an older pattern. There's Fox's View, Plum Street. And um, I don't know when she did this one. Oh, copyright 2019. So I got this at Sassy Jack Stitchery. And I guess it was 2019. Uh, that I got it because um, my mom had seen foxes in the mountains on her lane that year and I saw this and I was like I'll stitch this for my mom and I got it kitted up and I think they gave me I don't even know what count it was it was probably 36 maybe it was 32 I don't know um, but I messed up and I got frustrated and I have literally no idea where that <laughs> whip is. So I was like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it on 40 count. Um, and the platinum is, it's not a true white, it's a slightly gray. So I really like it on that. And I'm going to finish it in the same fashion. Um, and I'll get to that in haul, but I was not smart enough to read <laughs> what color they used for the chenille on this pillow. Um, so I got a black chenille. So this will be completed for my mom. She's already seen it because I couldn't stand it. It was so cute. Um, but she hasn't seen obviously the finished because I haven't finished it yet. One day soon. My intent was Mother's Day. Still haven't even sent my mom her Mother's Day gift. Do you think she still loves me? Of course she does. Look at this. Too cute. Too cute. Um, and I mostly listen to her. So the other two whips that I've worked on um, is a unicorn, a peacock, and a badger. Or a peacock, a unicorn, and a badger. One of those two. Hold on a second. Hold, please. Let's find it. Oh, it's... I uh, have been using Good Notes, and I don't think I can ever go back, people. Good Notes is an app that um, you can make good notes on. <laughs> um, but you can do all kinds of things with it, but it's great for cross stitch um, because you can pinch it open, you can highlight your stitches without hurting the. Um, printed chart, but more importantly the reason why I like it is because I can It updates on all my devices so No matter where I'm stitching or with what iPad or or iPhone or whatever um, Where I can pick up where I left off on any device so um, Now I can't remember who did this design Scarlet Letter, I think. Um, oh, hi. Apparently I just got a text from Ron and Connie. <laughs> um, so that is a full coverage um, design. And I am starting on this side over here, the upper right hand side. And um, I, I, I've said this before, I'm in love with this. It is such a fun, fun stitch. It is like coloring with linen and fabric and thread. Um, this is where I'm at. I made some good progress. I, I've gone to sheet number two of like, there's a ridiculous amount, there's like 30 sheets. So, <laughs> um, obviously I didn't 100% complete it. There's a lot of uh, green to fill in. Um, and there's a couple of things down here on the bottom. This thread down here, I know Ron will ask, let me stop moving it around so you guys can see. That is me, uh, what we call parking our thread. That's a new term, Ron. Look it up. Not look it up, I'm about to tell you. So when you uh, put your thread through there, that means that I still need to use that thread. I'm sure on this next page it's going to go down. Um, so instead of finishing it off, 
um, I am keeping the thread and I just kind of ran it through so it doesn't get tangled up and I won't get it tangled up in other stitches. And it's called parking your thread. A lot of um, a lot of the full coverage um, cross stitchers, people that cross stitch only <laughs> full coverage, um, their their patterns have a lot of confetti, meaning one stitch here, one stitch over here, one stitch over here of the same color. So they do a different style of parking and they often use gridded linen or gridded fabric so that they can count off and they they do it more in a grid fashion than I do. I, I'm still using just, just counted cross stitch techniques. Isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. It's, it's DMC. It's the called for DMC and this is a vintage country mocha 40 count because it's my new fave um, and I love it. I love it so much. I love it so much. Um, the other one that I've gotten just a couple threads in I haven't gone crazy on it and um, let me show you what she looks like. It's Mrs. Campbell um, and I realized as I was getting this one ready that I haven't even um, where where I was stitching I haven't even really completed it so Mrs. Campbell this is by Hands Across the Sea this is 46 count which is really hard for me um, and I'm also using 103 silks which is also hard for me um, and, and it, it is doable, but it is not necessarily like sit down and sew for a little bit. It is something I have to pay attention to and I have to use the right magnification and the right lighting. I can't just pick it up and go, which is what there's a nice balance in the 40 count for me that I can use not so hard to uh, high count readers. And um, I still need decent lighting, of course, but it's easier for me just to pick up and go, especially when I'm using cottons. I, I'm, I am struggling with this. So Mrs. Campbell. So you'll see here, Ron, right there, the little red knot. I mentioned earlier, and let me just get all this in, when I was talking about Jean Farish, that uh, she told me about a waist knot. That is a waist knot where you tie a knot in your fabric and you, I didn't go far enough in this one, but that's how you use um, to kind of keep the tension before you bury your threads on the back. So I will waste that by cutting that off and then bury the threads um, from the tail that's left behind. I struggle with guessing how long of a tail I should have. But um, I really do like this um, and I enjoy doing a couple of the letters. Um, I've enjoyed the stitches. I have made a couple mistakes, but that's okay. And you see the needle here at the top? That That's the needle that's been helping me um, the most. Um, Jean from the attic in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, recommends using a beading needle, uh, especially when you're using 103, 103's silks, uh, Verisois, or um, a higher count, like 46 and up. Um, and that it's just a thinner needle, so it's easier to get through the holes. Because this, and it could also be this hand dyer, because when you hand dye the fabrics, they do. Uh, change in count slightly or get tighter but this 46 count is a very tight weave and I have struggled the struggle is real so in my stitching oh let me show you the stitching bags I've had them in um, I didn't bring mrs. Campbell's bag in uh, I keep her in my carry-all tote um, I keep my um, peacock 
a unicorn, peacock, and a badger in this big guide that I made. It's one of my favorite bags. Um, I have a cool little bling on it. A little rotary cutter. It matches. I hope you noticed. Um, I have been trying to figure out like the perfect sizes of things to make these bags with, and this is a bigger bag, but um, it. I really need it for the peacock because the fabric is really big for so for bigger projects it's really does work nicely. Um, when I bought the um, platinum, I, I believe I bought a yard of this, um, and I was gathering several projects. I had bought because I work I don't know if you know this I work at the container store. Um, Marie Kondo has a line of vinyl bags which um, if you watch the Curious Crafters, which again, if you don't, you should. Um, two sisters that are math teachers for middle school kids and they have, during the pandemic, got back into sewing or into cross stitching um, and I love them dearly. But they use these bags as well. But this is a legal sized version um, and that just fits all the projects in there. That's been nice to put in there. I'm going to put my stuff away as I'm talking. I think uh, while I have it out, um, I will show you one of my next projects on that platinum is going to be jeans and weenies. <laughs> because I have weenies. Um, and it is summer, so you should do something patriotic during the summer. So, I uh, got the DMC conversion for this, and I don't like it. So, I think I'm going to have to order them. She uses Classic Color Works and um, Weeks Dye Works, and I think I'm going to do that because I, I think I like those colors better. They, they just kind of, the DMC version just kind of, a little bland. So, I would like to um, make more bags possibly make enough bags to sell um, but I I haven't perfected them yet so I haven't but I'd like to do like a, a medium and a large I think is what I'm gonna do all right we are down to the haul portion of the video um, this is not all my haul because I have dispersed my haul at this point. Um, so I may not even remember what I bought. <laughs> but these are some of the highlights of what I bought. So as, as for mentioned, uh, Ron's jump into the sewing machine field. Um, as I was collecting a welcome to sewing, antique sewing machine world um, gifts, I realized oh, I might need more needles and Becky's House of Sewing can't be without needles. I, I can't even be low on needles. I need to have a lot of needles. So I bought some needles. <laughs> so I went on the Schmetz website and I got um, some that I was familiar with and some that I wasn't. Um, they are moving to Chrome because it lasts a lot longer, so I went with Chrome. Um, with the high speeds of the newer machines, uh, the Chrome is more stable. Oh God, I got nice, lots of packs. And then, you know, you had to buy so much and then you get a free needle guide which this information is free on their website as well. They have a lot of good resources. So if you are interested in learning about your needles, because though it may be a small piece, it is one of the most important parts of having a good sewing experience and is likely the first thing that is incorrect. Um, if you're having a sewing issue. If for some reason your stitches aren't coming out right or it sounds funny, change your needle 
or re if you just changed your needle, then re-thread your needle um, because oftentimes something has gone awry at that point. Um, I've listened to the lady who represents Schmitz in America um, speak several times, and I highly recommend it. If you uh, do a quick search for podcasts with her on there, um, or just do a search for Schmidt's Needles. She also has a newsletter that comes out. Um, really helpful tips to hone in sewing issues and um, have a better overall sewing experience because different materials or different sewing projects require different needles. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So in order to finish my mom's um, pillow, I needed to buy more trims and, you know, a trim can't go alone. So I went to Lady Dots Creates on Etsy. I went to her Etsy shop and I really like her pom-poms and I got some antique zigzag, um, rickrack, not zigzag. It is a zigzag, but it is called rickrack. I think you can see it's kind of sprayed down with that antiquing stuff. And then I got two chenilles. I got the pink and the black. It's my favorite kind of pink. And I really just want to have some things on hand. I don't have any particular um, need for most of this. But it's good to have stuff on hand. And then I got this really cool, she calls it an eyelash chenille. Um, and kind of a mossy green. She calls it algae. So there's that. Um, I've been using um, this hoop. I got a hoop from hoopandframeshop.com a long time ago and um, have loved it. This is a six inch hoop. I watched Floss Toss and um, no, I'm not going to remember her name. But the one that used to be a cross-stitch designer who is now a yarn dyer and now dyes uh, linen for cross-stitch. Uh, name escapes me. Please be yelling at me. I'll remember it eventually. Uh, she likes a three or four inch hoop. And I tried that. And it's like... The area is not big enough for me to work in. I have to move move it too often, um, which I find a little frustrating. But this is a 5 8 uh, thick, and it it's just perfect for me to hold. It's not so big that it's heavy. Um, so I bought another one um, just so that I didn't have to always dig it out of one project bag so I could have it in two project bags um, and a, a hoop should not travel alone that would be sad so I bought <laughs> more linen Woo! Um, I bought this is legacy linen which a lot of my friends um, in my other cross stitch group not Wednesday stitchers I guess we're called the Soyo stitchers for South York County um, they love legacy linen and um, one thing that I have been frustrated with, and now granted, I have no projects in mind necessarily, um, but I wanted to have a little more 40 count around in case something came up. Um, but a lot of the, there are cross stitch stores, only a handful of cross stitch stores that I enjoy shopping online with. There is not a local cross stitch store in my area, so shopping online is what I have to offer. Um, and I also tend to not be available during craft store hours, <laughs> boutique craft store hours, which is one of my issues with um, So Indipitous in Rock Hill. Uh, they close at three. And they are not open on Sundays. So I can't go. Which is probably not a bad thing, honestly. But 
um, you know, I, I want to, like, I don't want to have to take time off work so I can go shopping. I mean, I do, but I don't. Um, anyway, I digress. Uh, so, a lot of hand dyers when I go shopping on these websites and the places I like to go, uh, Kitten Stitcher, Teresa's place, um, I like to shop at uh, Hoop and Frame. One, two, three stitch is pretty easy, but I don't necessarily enjoy how they ship stuff. Um, it's not bad, it's just not pretty either. Um, and I've had some things kind of get a little disarrayed in the packing. Um, and now I can't, what's the Hobby House Needleworks is also a great place to shop. Um, and I feel like there's one more, but all the other great places to shop from don't have a great website to shop from. Um, like, and I get it, like. It, it's hard to keep up with the inventory on there or it's just not their jam and they do more phone orders and they're not their business is not suffering so I great perfect um, I'm an online shopper <laughs> so uh, legacy linen hoop and frame has legacy linen and they weren't out of stock of most things and that's what I find with a lot of the hand dyers that I want to try, like, they're just out of stock. <laughs> they're popular, so it's either out of stock or it takes three months to get to you. Again, a lot of these people are one-man shows. I get it. Um, but I'm an Amazon shopper. I need my stuff. And even this, I mean, granted, I bought this over the holiday weekend, and it within a week it, it's reasonable but um, legacy linen doesn't have a 40 count they, so I did the 38 count and I'm, I'm excited to try this out so um, I got a fat quarter of it and it's Fuller's teasers teasel teasel and um, over a cut I've been trying to find the perfect readers, especially to make Mrs. Campbell more enjoyable to stitch. So I bought a bunch of these. Uh, this is, I think, it's hard to buy readers that are half moons, um, which is what I prefer to uh, stitch with. Not only because I think I look cute, but I like to look up. I just It's easier on my eyes. Um, and Amazon doesn't have a lot of readers like this that you can just buy one or two of that are higher than three. Uh, there is a website called readers.com where you can get uh, cheap readers. Um, I've just been, I, I just haven't used them. Um, again, because I don't want to buy a ton of them. I just want to buy one of them at a reasonable dollar amount. Um, so I tried uh, to buy uh, Lori Holtz. I went to Fat Quarter Shop and got Lori Holtz uh, number five and they're just too strong. Uh, twos are what I usually use uh, for my 40 count with good lighting. It's perfect. Um, I know a lot of my Stitchy friends like to do the fives with good reading, uh, with good lighting. I don't know how y'all do it. I don't like them. Um, so if anybody wants these, let me know. For some reason, the poor label has been ripped out, but that's okay. I think this is really cute material. It's Lori Holt's material, of course, um, but I find these holders really annoying. Um, and I think the glasses are too, too strong for me. So, um, yeah, anybody want these? Let me know. And I think that is, like I said, I bought other things, but who knows what or where they are or clearly not impactful. So, um, I will see you guys later. I hope you guys 
I uh, had some fun watching uh, this. Thank you for watching. If you are into it, subscribe if you haven't. Um, otherwise, get to get to crafting people. Stop watching me and go craft something. Or hopefully you've been crafting while you're watching me. That's the ideal way to do it. A little double dipping situation. Anyway, I will see you next time. Who knows when that will be? Hopefully in two, a week or two weeks. Who knows? No promises, people. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.